Ghost Types by Ebony Souls It's been several years since then, but as an elder brother and now lone child, I'll never be able to shake the pain I feel when walking through Santaloon Forest. It's an ordinary day here in Santaloon City, a slight breeze in the air, along with the usual cool but still bright weather. My family and I lived in Santaloon for years. In fact, my own parents were born and bred in this very city, which was more like a town if anything. Because of that, as well as our characteristically typed gyms just like everywhere else in Kalos, we were bug type enthusiasts. Unfortunately, bug types have never really been the strongest Pokemon type, nor have they been particularly threatening. Lo and behold though, my team consists of them. But unlike the usual bug catchers or kids around Santa Loon, I actually bothered to train my friends to get them stronger. So, at this moment, my team consists of a level 23 male Butterfree called Atlas, a level 24 female Fletchender called Ember, and my father's hand-me-down, a level 27 male Garden Vavilion called Emerald. And if you know what Santa Loon is like Pokemon level-wise, you'll know that most Pokemon aren't trained over level 10. Pathetic, really. It honestly doesn't take much to train bug types. If anything, it's a miracle that I was able to get them over level 15, with what low-level grinding I had to do for days and days. Hell, weeks if I'm honest. It doesn't matter how deep my heritage and roots are in Santa Loon, nor how fun it is being the strongest trainer in the whole city. I want to out of this place before I see another messily bug catcher or youngster asking for a battle. What I honestly want is to explore, get out of this boring old place I've lived in for, well, 16 long and overrun years, and live my life outside of the bug hunting and dull lifestyle I currently have the joys of living through. My parents always had a strong hold of me and my younger brother and never let us go anywhere. That hold only got stronger after he disappeared. It was three years ago, me and my brother were in Santa Loon Forest looking for some Pokemon to catch. At the time, I was 13 and only allowed my first Pokemon, which turned out to be my father's Vavilion. My parents were very reluctant to let me train Pokemon until I was ready. I was hunting for my own Pokemon, hoping to get one that could easily beat my father's and even be stronger. But I was supposed to babysit for my parents, and after an entire hour of begging them, they finally let me and my little brother Kyle go to the forest. I didn't see what the big deal was. All that was in the forest was weak bug types, along with the occasional Pikachu, but still. My brother was eight, still a crybaby, and always needed a big brother in everything or anywhere he went. And as the oldest of us two, I was always told to watch him or go with him, even to the store. Now, as a tightly knit town, I can tell you I had no need to constantly watch him. The rest of the town were always doing that. Still miffed me how I had to put up with him. Another reason why I wanted to start my Pokemon journey as quick as possible. Anyway, it was around 4pm, and me and Kyle were still hunting, until we came across Fletchling, which later became my Ember. I was so excited, this was my first real Pokemon, and I was going to cherish it. Wow, big brother caught a birdie? My brother called from behind me. The cheeriness evident in his voice. He ran up to me, still giddy and happy, wanting to pet the small bird. What you gonna call it? Oh, can I name it? I want to call him Tweeters. I looked down at my brother. I remember I smirked at him before my expression faded into a smile instead. Sorry bro, I don't think Tweeters would be a good name. I see his expression fall, but suddenly his face lights back up again. What about Red then? What? Red. His head is red, so call him Red. I chuckled at my brother's simplicity, along with his honest mistake. Bro, this little guy is a girl. He immediately looked shocked before reeling backwards. I'd like to think I raised an eyebrow at his antics, but I know I looked at him in a confused fashion instead. Ew, cooties. I couldn't help but laugh at that. Again, my brother was way too innocent for his own good, making yours truly feel way older than I actually was. Kai, Pokemon don't have cooties. Kai was a nickname I had for my brother. Most used when I was trying to either confuse my brother or to tease him. Here, it was for the latter. The Fletchling decided that it was a good time to snuggle onto my neck, creating another series of ewes followed by my laughter. You know what, Kai? I'm gonna call her Amber. I didn't want my brother to be too upset with me making a name completely different to what he said, so I looked at the closest thing I could to Red, which seemed creative, for a kid at least. Ember, what that mean? 
Ember means weak fire or candle flame, but it's also female version of red. Like the girl in town? No, her name is Amber. What's Amber mean then? Orange. Balancing Ember on my shoulder carefully, as well as bringing out Emerald from his Pokeball so he could meet the new teammate. I took my brother's hand and we headed off towards the exit. Big brother! Yes, Kai? I want a Pokemon. One that's blue with big round ears and fluff on his head. Could you get me one? You mean a Panpour? Sure, I can get you one. The excitement overtakes Kyle and he begins to jump up and down with glee. A smile creeps its way onto my face, until I remember to check the time. It was 5pm now, time for us to go home. Kai, I'll get you one tomorrow, we need to go home. What? why Cause it's late and I don't want to worry mum and dad. Aw, oh, please? Just one more minute, I really want a pan pour. Kyle, we need to go home, mum and dad will worry. No they won't, please, please. He began to beg me, pulling on my arm. Sighing, I shake him off. Fine, 15 more minutes. We don't find a panpour in that time, we're going home. Yay! Hmm. I've always been a big softy towards my brother. I didn't like to admit it though, being a boy I was supposed to be tough and strong and all those other generic things a self-conscious boy thinks about when they're barely a teen. I sent Emerald around the area to look for signs of a panpour, hoping that maybe I could keep Kyle from going too far. Didn't work. He'd seen a blue shape in some of the grass, a panpour nibbling on some berries. A scream of delight filled the air, and in seconds he was running towards it, I barely having enough time to turn around to see what the noise was about before spotting the blue blur running off into the deeper parts of the forest, my little brother in tow. Kyle, get back here now! Don't worry Sam, I'ma catch it! In seconds, I could no longer see him. Shouting to Emerald, I ordered him to follow the pair as I tried desperately to catch up, Ember clinging onto my shoulder tightly with her little feet. A few minutes of running in still, no sign of Kyle or the pan pour. Taking a few moments to catch my breath, Ember flew up to try and spot two pair, but again, she had no idea which direction to look. Remembering what my father told me about being lost in the forest, I stayed where I was and held on to Ember, hoping maybe Kyle would run back in this direction or that Emerald would find me. Several more minutes and Emerald appeared, a few nicks in its wings from the branch as he had flown by trying to reach my brother, as well as the sad expression on his little face. Emerald led us out of the forest and by now it was gone 20 to 6 and my parents were worried out of their minds. I pointed at the forest before saying he had gone to chance a panpour he had seen, along with saying Emerald tried to follow him but lost him. My father took Emerald from me before calling the other adults around town and heading off into the forest, Pokemon following them dutifully behind. Mother took me inside, trying to calm me down, although I remember she was the one more panicked than I. No, I knew my brother was lost in the forest and there was a chance they wouldn't find him, but it was the fact that it had been my responsibility that stuck with me. My little brother, gone, and it was my fault for not being able to say no. A week passed and no sign of my little brother. A human dies within three days of not having water. A week if they did have water, but without food. My mother was devastated, my father livid. Father blamed me, saying it was my fault while mother cried herself to sleep upstairs. I knew it was my fault that we were not home on time, but that didn't mean it was my fault for my brother. Kyle should have listened to me. He was the one who got lost. The one that scared mother half to death, not me. It didn't matter though. A week had passed, Emerald had been returned to me, and now I had even more reason to leave this hellhole. The looks. Looks of pity and shame. I didn't need them. Pity doesn't bring anyone back, nor does villainizing me. Anyway, now I'm 16 and I'm free as a bird. I feel sad about leaving my mother, seeing as she still hasn't gotten over Kyle, but I won't miss father, but with the shouting and accusations that had become a daily ritual of sorts. I'd gone on a short trip to Lumino City to get a Pokédex from Professor Sycamore, then returning home to pack my rucksack and saying my final goodbyes before making one last trip to the forest. It was just afternoon, a light breeze rustling the leaves to create a pleasantly calm feeling, as well as the light shining through them, creating elegant patterns on the ground. It was quiet as usual, besides the odd fletchling singing a sweet song as they fly by. Ember sat on my shoulder, also enjoying the peace and quiet. 
The quiet chatter of the town like city could be heard mere minutes away, but here it was nothing but a minuscule reminder of home. I wander around, absent-mindedly admiring the peace this place brought. Although, really, it should have every reason not to. I thought about what team I should build, what Pokemon I should catch. An Esper seemed like a good start, and I heard a Noibat, despite its huge weakness to ice, was a good flying type. Maybe a water type was a safe bet for the last spot, but it seemed a bit boring. Electric? Well, not a bad idea. A Go-Goat with double team with Emerald or Atlas? Grass type aren't any stronger than bug types, but it could work. I'm called out of my musing by a small rustle, along with a Pokemon cry that sounded oddly like a sad cry, but it was so quiet it was barely a whisper. I turn in the direction of the rustling grass and see an odd-looking branch. I watch it curiously for a few moments before the grass shuffles again and I see an odd-looking branch is connected to a small stump, another branch mirroring on the opposite side. Taking a few steps forward, I also notice two large holes in the stump as well as the actual piece of foliage being hollow. Confused, I pick it up as to get a better look. Bringing it up to eye level, I look at the old piece of wood before hearing Ember chirp next to me, as well as Atlas' characteristic wing beats come up from behind me, curious as to what I was looking at. A few moments of nothing until a pair of eyes open within the two holes in the stump, scaring the life out of me and making me drop it unceremoniously onto the ground. Damn ghost types scared the life out of me. Emerald had also come over, and he and Atlas were sharing looks before both reduced to balls of untamed laughter. Ember chirped also, teasing me with a nudge of her wing into my cheek. I scoffed and looked down at the smallest Pokemon before taking out my Pokédex. It registers as Phantump, the stump Pokemon. Fitting title. Looking down at the timid little thing, I bent down and pull a Pokeball from my pocket. It immediately gets scared at the sight of the Pokeball and visibly shivers and shuffles backwards. Bless him, he's scared. It's okay little guy, I'm not gonna hurt you. Sorry for me dropping you scared you. It looks up, shaking and unsure. Let me make it up to you. I shuffle around my bag before pulling out an orin berry. Here you go. It nervously takes the berry before nibbling on it in a shy manner. What are you doing here, little guy? You lost your friends? Phantom only appears in Route 16, and this was quite a way away from there. It finishes the berry and continues to look up at me, a contemplating look on its little face. Then again, seeing as you guys look more like a forest Pokemon, maybe you migrate to wooded areas for food or shelter. Listen, I know you Pokemon are smarter than you let on, so I know you understand me. I'm starting my Pokemon journey today, and was just making one last visit here before heading off. I looking for new places, new sites, new Pokemon. You seem sweet and kind of lovely, so I thought maybe you'd like to join me. You don't have to if you don't want to. The gentle breeze rustles the feathers of Ember, as well as shakes the leaves growing on Phantom's branches. It continues to look up at me, until it gives a small smile. I smile back, and with a Pokeball in hand, I place it gently up to the Pokemon's head and watch as it disappears into the Pokeball. A few shakes in the Pokeball registers the Phantom has caught. I immediately out the Pokeball again, allowing it outside as to pet it. Now, what should I name you? It should having play with your type. Hmm, Ghost and Grass. It continues to look up at me before its little arms touch my folded pair and pulls itself up to my face. Smirking, I take hold of my newest friend and pull him up with me. Now I'm standing and he's at my eye level. What about Soulstone? Now this sounds like a ghost rock type. Oh, what about Ghost Thorn? Ember squawks beside me, a clear no coming from her shaking head. Since when are you deciding for him? I smirk down at her, receiving an indignant peck, which caused the other Pokemon to laugh. Smiling, I turn to Phantom. Okay, anyway, can you tell me what you want? It smiles, poking the center of my chest before pointing at a small flower bud nearby. Heart flower? I got a smack, curiously, from Ember's wing. Hey, I could have said something stupider like body bud. Two loud squawks of no from Atlas and Emerald. Okay, what about soul bloom? The ghost smiles at me before waving its little arms happily and giving me a hug. Soul Bloom it is then. I smile before returning the hug and carrying Soul Bloom out of Santaloon Forest.
That was Ghost Types. Final thoughts? This wasn't a fucking creepypasta. I'm usually not angry while recording these stories, but this time I'm fucking pissed. How the hell did this get through my forum? It's absolutely full of typos and not even a creepypasta. Even if you want to adopt the theory that the phantom at the end was really somehow the main character's brother, that doesn't make this a creepypasta. The story takes place in the Pokemon universe, but terms like grinding are still used, by the way. I find it really unrealistic. No one in the Pokemon games talks about grinding. It's not a thing in their universe. Only players of the video games say that. You know, I, I can't even talk about this anymore. It's giving me a headache. This story was a flagrant waste of my time. That's it for this creepy pasta. Tune in again next Saturday when we tackle yet another story made and sent in by the fans with The Lighthouse. If you want to write your own story, help appear edit a story, or even just read the stories early, check out the description where you'll find a link to the creepypasta section of my forum. You'll also find a link to the playlist of every creepypasta reading I've done. If you're interested in keeping up on my blog posts, join the Facebook fan page linked below. Remember that if you want your story to be read on the show, you must stay active on your post on the forum, as well as read the forum rules. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, sweet dreams.